Hey, Redcon Raider here, and welcome back to the beta for Warhammer 40k Rogue Trader. As today, we continue trying to navigate an increasingly difficult situation. Though really, it's uh, not so much the heretics as it is the impending collapse of our Geller fields and becoming stranded in the warp for all eternity. But, you know, uh, we're, we're working on it. First things first, let's level the playing field. So, yeah, yeah, it turns out that just like in the Alpha, uh, the level-up system in the Beta is pretty straightforward. It just took some getting used to the new visual layout. Since, obviously, back during the Alpha, we had the giant kind of crazy snaking tree, the very linear skill tree, whereas now we have it presented in a much neater, spoked circle. And, yes, each time we hit one of these spokes, we do get both of the abilities on it. So, in this case, we get a skill upgrade, as neatly laid out on our right column here. And then we get a new ability, which we'll handle in just a second. As far as skills go, I really appreciate that they now kind of break it down into separate categories to explain exactly where your potential advances are coming from. In this particular case, the majority of ours come from Marksman, with a single extra layer of awareness coming from Criminal, which is termed as Vagabond here. That feels kind of judgy. But, you know, we'll, uh, we'll take it. As for our ability, we've uh, we've actually got some very intriguing new options here, some of which I really wouldn't mind trying out. This one in particular. But that said, we should really get the basics laid out first, and as I said last time around, Controlled Shot is just too useful to pass up. But, you know, we've got plenty of other ability slots coming up, so we should be able to play with some of that other stuff soon. And then pretty much the same deal for Abelard, ability and skill. Though there is some slight variance by class as you get to higher levels. And um, in his particular case, again, we're really laying out our basics here. And I'm thinking we'll go for Threatening Yell for crowd control. Though Endure is definitely on our must-have list as well. Given the whole new injury system and all. For skills, pretty much the same deal as the Alpha. He's our most physical party member, so either Carouse or Athletics. And between the two, I feel like we'll probably be getting more use out of Athletics in our current circumstances. So we'll start with that one. And that's pretty much it. Even with the uh, increased number of perks per level, still a pretty quick process, which I appreciate. That said, moving on, we've... We only have one option as to where to go, so let's go there. And there we go. Ominous. Adira! What's going on? The woman before you whips around and gazes straight at you, her eyes glowing with otherworldly light. And so he will enter the halls of the blinded guide and witness the radiance of the final dawn through the cracks and fall victim to a whim of fate. Master Redcon, watch your head. Oh, my. Adira. Abelard grumbles as he dusts himself off and grips his weapon again. Would it be too much to ask that you phrase your soothsayings plainly for once? That was too close. The woman bursts into guttural drunken laughter. Sorry, old man. The voices are so loud I can't even hear myself. They shriek. They sing. They... Oh, Abelard. How they sing. Redcon. This is Adira Tlas, personal psyker and diviner of her ladyship, Theodora von Valancius. Abelard looks her up and down. Adira. I'm not drunk, old man. I'm suffering the effects of the warp that's seeping through these walls. I see the ship's fate. To die in the waves of the Immaterium. Fall under the burning rays of the final dawn. And in the roaring blaze, I see a figure standing... Who is it? Who? I have no answer. 
The entity in your consciousness shrinks and crawls in deeper, its claws scraping against the walls of your mind, as if the presence is trying to hide from the seer standing before you. Oh, is that thing still inside us? That's great. I, um, I didn't realize that. I imagine that'll be an issue at some point. So you're a diviner, are you? Adira nods, yet her gaze is directed somewhere away from you. The voices from beyond the threshold whisper to me. Sometimes their murmurs are clear, they grant insight. Sometimes they drive me mad. But I am patient, I know how to listen and discern. But now with this clamor around me, too many voices, too loud. Adira turns her head to you, her vacant eyes flaring like embers. And you, you are Retcon Von Valancius, one of Lady Theodora's heirs. Well then, we finally meet. You hear a few clicks from the relays on the servo skull, which has followed you all the way here. And Theodora's scrambled words give way to a voice vaguely familiar to you. Officer's frequency. To all who can hear me, those with a weapon in their hand are to gather on the officer's deck at once. I repeat, gather on the officer's deck at once and prepare to launch a counter-offensive. That's Edeldred, Emperor's Providence. The other heir lives as well. Quickly, we must head to... Oh, snap, so Edeldred's still around. That's a bit surprising. Though the day is still young. Not so fast, old man. If we drown in the warp, no number of Lady Theodora's heirs will be of use to us anymore. If Edelthred, like me, has not yet surrendered either mind or body to the mercy of the warp, then he can still hold out a little without us. Abelard spits out a florid curse. Blast it. You're right. First, we need to deal with what is happening here. And it's pretty obvious how she knows who we are. Why were you just standing in this hallway when we arrived? The whispers called to me. The ones that I could make out among all the screams and screeches. Those who are rocking this boat hit us where it hurt. They went after the navigator, our guide through the warp. Other whispers called me to the engineerium, but it was too late. I heard the cry of our master cog. And the silence that followed... What? You don't mean the Chief Engine Seer is? Yes, Abelard. Dead. Without a doubt. And the voices wail, heralding countless nightmares, cackling at each soul among the hundreds that are now joining the warp. The shriek from the Navigator's sanctum was louder than the rest. And it's better that we save the Navigator than some lever puller from a cooling module or a cook from the middle decks. I don't know. Proper leverage is important. But, yes, we should see if the Navigator is well. Oh, no, 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 no. Nothing is well about him. Can't you feel the chill crawling on our skin? The eyes watching you? The warp ice has already encased the bulkheads. What follows is calamity. Adira freezes, then she slaps her cheeks, rubs her face, and looks at you. The supernatural glow is gone from her eyes and a smirk spreads across her lips. But we're not just going to stand here and take it, are we? The state of things in here suggests there's a navigator around, maybe one who's crippled or at death's door, but still kicking. And since our skin hasn't peeled off our faces just yet, his third eye must be closed. At worst, it's a little roughed up. So, what are we moping around for? Let's go protect that noble mutant while we're still alive. Party tutorial. And we're up to three. Nice. Let's have a look. Armored body glove. Very nice. And a psychic staff. That's new. The wielder of this staff gets lightning arc with six power level. And it's heroic act and desperate measure versions. The power level affects the damage of this power. Also, plus five willpower, which is very nice. Wow, so basically a melee weapon that also grants max level force lightning. That is 
pretty incredible, even if it is obviously restricted to Psyker classes. That's a that's a huge step up from the uh, marksman rifle they saddled her with in the in the alpha, or maybe it was a sniper rifle. I forget. Because yeah, back then you essentially had to split her between ballistics and willpower, turning her into a de facto hybrid class, and it didn't really work out in either direction. Now though, we can uh, keep her much more focused. Though of course we'll still slap a sword on there just for those rare emergency situations where she might otherwise be overwhelmed. And then as far as her level up goes, I'm not seeing one in the queue, so I'm assuming they already assigned it. Oh, yeah. Okay, so she comes in at level 2. Trained in Medicaid. Interesting. Oh, exposed weakness. I'm not a fan of that one, but, I mean, we'll take it. Medicaid's a bit of a surprise, though. I didn't really picture her as being a medic character. Though she is an adept, so intelligence is one of her primary attributes. I suppose that... That's not a complete mismatch. Personally, I would have preferred to have her focused on warp lore. Or something similar. That's fine. We can work with that. That does bode poorly for later companions, though, if they preset their levels before you get them. Because that means certain characters will be coming in at, like, level 15, 20. So they'll have completely established builds by that point. Victory awaits. A piece of pipe left a noticeable dent in the floor. Neat. Hurry! Destroy this field! Don't keep our master waiting! Hey, people to kill. Don't mind if I do. None shall stand in my way. We've also got the drop on him, so let's see if we can get surprise. I don't know if there is actually a surprise mechanic in this game. And that guy up front is a psyker, so let's start with him. Should I divine on next step? No? Guess we're out of range. That's fair. Tire of idleness, let's move. Nothing I can't do. My rock. Cross them. Nice. No mention of an ambush or a surprise round, so we'll position our guys cautiously. Tutorial on combat indicators. Pretty straightforward. And right, no no surprise round. But we do get first shot. Suits my purposes. Oh, wow. Couldn't have possibly hoped for better results than that. Okay, so fight's pretty much done. I mean, there's a there's a tutorial about Adira's powers, but it feels a bit superfluous at this point. And we're done. The creature in the chair appears as if it has become one with its throne. You see pink, parchment-like skin stretched between the seat and the limbs that have too many joints for a normal human being. The navigator is breathing heavily, the air whistling as it exits through the two dark, gill-like slits on its cheeks. The creature's eyes are shut, the two ordinary eyes as well as the third one that sits in the center of its forehead. I believe Master Vespiatus still lives. Abelard flinches at the sight of the stretched skin and the dark marks on the face of the creature. The servants are dead, but the chamber, thank the Emperor, is still sealed from the warp. Well, we have a chance of leaving this place alive. Abelard clears his throat. Uh, Master Vespiatus. 
The navigator stirs, barely able to lift his head and half open his normal eyes. A dark drop rolls from under the closed lid of the third eye and down his face, leaving behind a black trail. Your time is short. The voice is coming from the box grill at the base of the bizarre chair. It is unclear how the navigator is able to produce human speech. Our time is short? To do what? Suddenly, the navigator's body starts thrashing in place. It lurches forward, then falls back into the seat, then thrusts forward again as its bones crack and its skin tears open. However, the fusion between the body and the chair appears to be stronger than these wild impulses. The mutant remains seated, but leans as far forward as he can, his layered raiment slowly turning crimson. The gill slits burst open, forming two hideous, screaming, mouth-like pits. Fall to your knees, mortal, and behold the final dawn! No. Pass. Adira shrieks in terror. It came from beyond! His body is not his! Adira's scream is echoed by the silent cries in your head. The unseen creature triumphs at the sight of the navigator succumbing to the paroxysms of corruption. Its march thunders under the burden of hopes. Unseal your hearts, and I will flood your souls with myriads of words and meanings, each one a portent of salvation within me. The navigator continues to convulse violently in his seat, shrieking and cackling. But then his fit stops abruptly. His face is drenched in black and crimson. The dark ooze from under his third eyelid is turned from a trickle into a stream, mixed with the blood coming out of his nose and there is a purplish swelling around the eye. Run! Flee from this place while I still have the strength. The words come out of the box as a labored rattle. I can contain the intrusion, but not for long. We must begin the translation. Leave the warp. But it can't be done without the Master Helmsman's help. What is happening to you? The edge. The navigator starts thrashing about once more, his gill mounts bursting with crazed laughter. Kneel before the ascent of a new champion! When the rite is complete, this shell will burst, and the thousands of maws will accept the sacrifice offered to the edge of daybreak by the bringer of twilight, the one marked by the will of the gods. Each word rings through your head like the tolling of a bell, as if countless voices have joined in, screaming in your ears. For a moment, you lose your bearings. This unholy chorus must be trying to confound you with sounds not meant for this world. What does any of this mean? A right, a sacrifice offered. Oh, my heart tells me that Conrad was not deterred by his defeat in the Warren Chamber. What? Conrad betrayed Lady Theodora? Adira clutches her head. But how is that... How... He was as loyal as a dog. And I didn't hear a thing, I swear. The navigator, or rather the thing that is so determined to seize his body, erupts into mocking laughter. The footfalls of the bringer of twilight are veiled by the will of his masters. Tear out your eyes, she who is about to become the champion's servant, for you need them no longer. We can't just leave you like this. How can we help you? The navigator takes a ragged breath. Run. The sanctum will be sealed. I will hold it off. Hold on and wait for the signal from the master helmsman. Then I will commence the translation. So run. Run! You heard him, Abelard. We must not let his sacrifice be in vain. Where do we go from here? The Seneschal gazes at the figure in the chair. The ship can only begin the translation with the assistance of the Master Helmsman. If he is still alive. It is worth a try. We must get to the bridge, but we will need support. 
Our only option is to fight our way to the officer's deck and join forces with Edelthred and his people. I believe we will also find Lady Theodora there. She must have heard the call to arms that the Servo Skull relayed to us earlier. Adira reaches her hand out toward the navigator, but pulls it back at the last moment. Espiatus, good luck. And thank you. The navigator does not give her a response. Black tears mixed with blood are streaming from under the closed eyelids, and the vox at the base of his chair is bellowing out static, interspersed with distant echoes of otherworldly laughter. Well, this is less than ideal. Oh, wow, look at that. You know, I assumed they had put that distortion field around him to kind of shield that he was just a normal character model, but... No, no, they uh, they went all out. They gave him a full custom model. That's impressive. The navigator seems dead. Only the slightest movement of his chest and the twitching of his eyelids let you know that he still clings to life. Oh, man, look at that, too. That is... Incredible. I guess that's like his navigation array, shaped like a massive, a truly massive, over-exaggerated pipe organ. I mean, seriously, this is a room that we're coming into like once ever. I, I don't remember ever visiting this room in the Alpha, you know, so the entirety of Act 2. It's crazy. They went to this kind of effort for what is essentially a brief pit stop during our tutorial. Alcat continues to impress. They really went all out on these set pieces. Scrappy auto gun. Essentially a downgraded version of the standard auto gun, so definitely not worth using, but pretty standard armament for your average expendable mooks, I think. I won't tolerate weakness. The Navigator's Sanctum is the private haven of the ship's guide through the warp, and a death trap for anyone left inside after the translation to the Immaterium. Yeah, we should uh, probably leave. We we probably should not be lingering in this particular chamber. Though, you know, one last sweep just to make sure we're not missing anything. Which we are not, so on we go. It's about time. Oh, let's uh let's check that locked door while we're here. See if that's opened up now. It has not. So, back to the lift we go. Oh yeah, yeah, officer's deck. There we go. Your ship's as good as ours! Blah. I shall pity not your enemies. I shall heed not their pleas. Somebody shoot this! God Emperor, through me. I shall betray not your tenants, nor stray one step from them. Told you he'd protect us. My God, my light, my emperor. My goodness, that is how you make an entrance. The white haired warrior turns to face you, her dark eyes blazing. The weapon quivers in her hands, and for a brief moment, it seems she is not going to stop and will instead continue eliminating every target she sees, 
starting with you. Sister Argenta! The Seneschal's voice carries the weight of a command, and it seems to bring the warrior out of her battle trance. Sister Argenta, it's a relief to see you in good health and well-armed. We require all the forces we can muster. The young woman called Argenta lowers her weapon and scans your small party with an intense gaze. Then she sets her sights on you. Your face. It is... unfamiliar. Who are you? Retcon von Valencius, the Lord Captain's heir. Argenta gives you another stern appraisal. You catch something strange in the dark depths of her eyes. Some internal struggle or a wordless question. In the end, however, she nods. The hour is dark and daunting. The ship abounds with corruption. The faces of friends are twisted by sneers of heresy. The eyes of comrades are igniting with the archenemy's hunger. I will stand shoulder to shoulder with anyone willing to halt the advance of the dark forces. That is why you have come, is it not? Sister, I beg of you. Abelard appears to be losing his patience. Now is not the time for interrogations. The ship is under attack by heretics. We've been betrayed by our esteemed Master of Whispers. Edelthread the Air is waiting for our aid. And Lord Captain Theodora is expecting a report on our success. Of course we are here to deal with the situation. So I suggest we all do just that. Best to keep this civil, I think. I am no retcon traitor, sister. You can be sure of that. If you speak truthfully, the Emperor will not forsake you. If you are lying, you will not escape his retribution. Duly noted. I cannot wait to rain fire upon more heretics, each and every one of them. Right. Uh, so... Who are these people with you? Overseer of Middle Deck AL-84, my lord. We were rounding up everyone we could find in the attack compartments when we ran into an ambush. Just about every enforcer fell. These are the survivors. I see. And the officer's deck? Massacre, my lord. And heretics are not just killing the crew. Some kind of blight is sweeping through the decks, filling the air. I saw people going mad the moment they breathed it in, screaming about seeing their dead comrades, tearing out their eyes. I implore you, my lord, be on your guard. Very well, then. We must get to the main hall at once. Through this door, Argenta nods at the passage to your right. I'll go with you. I can't wait to destroy those who encroached on the God Emperor's domain. And we will follow. For now, we will hold off any heretics who might try to crawl in through the cracks to join the main assault. And we'll take a look at the generators while we're at it. Those villains made a mess of the cables. Oh, I wish we had a Technomat with us. But we'll see what we can do without one. Good to hear it. Sister? Ready. Make Terra's light illuminate our path through fire and darkness. Sure, yeah, that. She seems nice. Let's check the rest of the hall before we go the way we're supposed to. Generators hum softly. When you draw closer, your skin begins to tingle from static discharges. We've got corpses and cultists next room over. Oh, right, and Argenta. Almost forgot about you. Let's see. Oh wow, is she in it? Is she an adept? That's weird. She was a soldier, uh, slash marksman, I guess, back in the Alpha. Oh no, wait, she isn't. She is a marksman. Then why did it just say she was an adept? I guess maybe the UI had some crossed wires. Yeah, yeah, okay, she is definitely a marksman. This makes more sense. And it looks like they defaulted her to dash, which is a good move. Especially since I do remember her having issues with mobility in the alpha. 
And then she's also focused on demolitions, which works out for us just fine. Unfading Valor. Miss Godwin Diaz Pattern Bolter was given to Sister Argenta on the day she took her vows to join the Order of the Martyred Lady. Unfortunately, despite its illustrious name, the gleam of its metal has dulled after years of travel and encounters with horrors untold, and the sacred prayers engraved on the barrel have been worn smooth in places. With every shot it fires, another spark goes out in the halo of sanctity that surrounds this noble weapon. Well, that is a shame. Here, I was thinking this is actually an improved, unique bolt gun, but it sounds like that's actually a an elaborate excuse to give us a slightly inferior bolt gun. Still good, though. I mean, this is definitely better than I remember them being back in the Alpha. The rate of fire in particular feels higher. And then a standard auto pistol in our off slot. Let's go ahead and pair that with a melee weapon. Sword's fine. We're not really going to go weapon skill on her, so the parry bonus is more important. And let's get a med kit on Adira. Okay, let us continue our explorations. Well maintained, Lasgun. Oh, look at that. They actually. The weapon comparison windows now show all of your currently equipped weapons of that type, as opposed to just your, uh, whichever active weapon set you have equipped at the moment. And, of course, even just at a cursory glance, this is a straight upgrade, so that's a no-brainer. And what have we here? The explosion blasted a hole through the door. Large enough for a person to get through. So, can I get through it? It certainly doesn't appear so. Which makes me question why that's even there. Though I guess that could be to explain how the cultists got in, or how these... Actually, that might be the direction Argenta came from, which I guess would make sense. Like, she literally blasted her way onto the scene, mid-gunfight. Oh, interesting. This is basically just our first stash of basic cargo. But I'm seeing a lot of new names there. Ooh, and they, uh, they also fixed the cargo stacking. That's nice. That was completely broken in the alpha, but it looks like it's actually functional now. Different stacks of different types of items have different values now, and they add up properly. That's mildly important in a game about rogue trading. The door will not move an inch. It is blocked. Fair enough. So once again, a single path to follow. Oh, okay. Yep, there's our skill check tutorial. And who is our tech expert? Abelard, unexpected. Nothing matters more. Yeah, back in the Alpha, I was spoiled by a certain tech priest who basically handled all that stuff for us. Oh, uh, goodness. Well, okay, so Abelard's not so much our tech expert as he is just not the worst person at it in our party. <laughs> Pascal, we need you, please. But at least we're well suited for this part. Let's give that new bolt gun a try. Onward. Annihilate them. I'll turn you into corpse starch. You know, I was expecting slightly more than that, but fair enough. Bolt guns aren't renowned for their long range accuracy, I suppose. But, we push on. Hopefully we'll get some decent initiative rolls here. Pay 
pain and oh. duty go hand in hand. Well, that's unfortunate. Not enough to cause an injury, though. So we're still good. What is that? Nope. What's? Aha! Uh -huh. Hidden goods. Nice. Nice. Missed the closer target, though. That's fine. We'll get him on our second volley. Let's see how they respond to this. Ooh, not quite far enough. Nothing I can't do. Oh, close. Close, but not quite. All right, I am definitely sensing a bit of a a bit of an escalation in threat levels here. These guys are actually doing some damage to us. I know what is to come. Let's use slightly more caution. Slap down some defensive buffs. Oh shoot! I guess I guess there's a cooldown on forewarning now. That's somewhat unexpected. Though I guess it does encourage players to mix up their moves as opposed to just slapping four warnings on the entire party like I was doing back in the alpha. Curse you, That's fine. <laughs> That's fine. I mean, I wouldn't have tucked Rhett out in the open like that if I'd realized I couldn't multicast four warning. But... It's a learning experience. Yeah, basically, I need to relearn how a lot of these little mechanics work now. I have to be careful about taking too much for granted since things have obviously changed since the alpha. It will be done. Come at me! Or not, because you passed your will save. Argenta, I'm going to need you to actually hit something this time. And also, I clicked on the wrong move, but fine, whatever. Oof. Hey, kill's a kill. I'll take it. I mentioned bolters aren't known for their accuracy, right? Man, you know what we really need is, uh, is that flamer, the flamer they gave us for back in the alpha. That thing was fantastic. Pretty much a guaranteed hit on everyone inside the AOE. Oh, uh, hi. This is unfortunate. We'll get Abelard on point. He goes before they do. Dang it. Come on, guys. Don't start... Don't start faltering on me now. Forewarning. Anything else? Nice. Just in time. All right, Abelard, you're in. A tactically sound approach. Indeed. That's one down. And charge? It will be done. Ah. Charge declined. Race for impact.
There we go. Faith without deeds is worthless. And momentum. Ow. Oh, snap. Momentum lost and head trauma gained. Gotta say, that's not a great trade off. Well, such is the price of my overconfidence. It is a slow and insidious killer. I shall not fear. But I shall not fear. Nothing I can't do. Nothing of value has been lost. Except Rabelar. My tactics are flawless. Losing me was your biggest mistake. Cover me. Just in case. Was was that you? Ah, good. Thankfully, our just in case was not needed. It's about time. Man, sorry about that, Adelard. I really thought you had that. But in my defense, they did kind of lure me into a false sense of security with those early easy fights. Also, I, I suppose that really is just the nature of the RNG, you know? Things like parry and dodge are all or nothing, so they work great right up until they don't. At which point, things like this happen. But on the bright side, the head trauma we got saddled with, which is interesting. Uh, it is neat that they have a, an actual injury system to penalize you for getting knocked out in combat now. But in this case, it actually kind of works out for us, because none of those attributes are ones that Abelard is reliant on. Aside from perhaps Fellowship, which I believe is keyed into his Hit the Dex ability. Though that's a once for combat, so not a huge deal. Between the wounds and the injury system, they definitely give you a lot more incentive to be cautious about how you approach combat, which uh, I appreciate. So I will definitely need to recalibrate my approach to some of these fights. That said, we'll hit the pause button for now, but we will pick up here next time. See you then. Oh, and special thanks to the Raiders, the fine folks who help make these videos possible. Including, but not limited to, Revenant, Aloise, Dragon Matrix 7, Dracket, Theory V23, Egon Alter, Emil, Excelsior, Goatleaf, James Tremier, Kazorm, Mark Jensen, Nathan Welch Jr., Overlord Ferrum, Random Passerby, Robbie B., Rowan Church, Thomas Piedkowski, Trip Hop and Skip, and Valenrook. Thanks for your support, guys. That said, if you'd also like to help support the channel, then feel free to push the buttons that do the things. Trust me, it does make a difference. Or you could even check out the PayPal, the Patreon, the Nexus GG, or the YouTube memberships. Links are in the description. A tactically sound approach. 